Hi, my name is Dan Lo. In this video, I'm going to talk about Spark SVM with kernel on Iris dataset. Okay, so uh, some of my students told me that uh, they uh, search search around the internet, but cannot uh, get the uh, problem solved uh, using the Spark SVM to work on the Iris dataset with some polynomial kernel. So I decided to make this video, you know, to give more information about this. So now, if you search on the internet, uh, you should be able to get some information on this topic. And I'm gonna post. Uh, I'm I'm gonna you know, uh, upload this video to YouTube. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about uh, Spark SVM examples. Okay, uh, that's the first thing you know to get the system to work. Uh, to get started. Then I'm going to briefly talk about a deep SVM format. Uh, actually, this is uh, the label, the point format uh, used in most of the Spark machine learning libraries. And then I'm going to talk about how to uh, load the iris that I said uh, in, S in a C common separated vector format. Uh, iris uh, is a flower. Uh, species uh, data set uh, used extensively in the classification in machine learning so um, uh, you can download it in, uh, over the internet it only contains 150 uh, records then i'm going to talk a, talk a little bit about the parsing uh, because uh, we need to uh, get the data into the labeled point format before we can call a spark svm uh, to work for us and then uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the manual kernel transformation. Uh, obviously, if you search on the internet, uh, you will get answers like uh, why Spark machine learning library for SVM uh, does not include the nonlinear transformation kernel. Okay, and the answer you probably can find is that. Uh, the nonlinear kernel transformation is hard to uh, distribute over a cluster of machines. Since Spark uh, is running on a cluster, in, uh, basically, basically it's a Hadoop uh, cluster. Okay, so to do that, uh, it probably very costly you know, to the message passing, other messages going around. Uh, it's not very efficient. That's why uh, the uh, Spark machine learning library for the SVM as of the day 2020 uh, October or still not uh, have the implementation for the nonlinear transformation with SVM but anyway uh, it's not a big deal we can do it um, ourselves using the manual kernel transformation ourselves and then uh, finally I'm going to talk, talk, talk a little bit more about the Spark vectors because basically we are working on the vectors directly okay so that is the video uh, let's start it so you can see uh, here uh, if you search uh, spark svm examples you get this page mostly okay so if you go down okay and then uh, to the svm part here the linear support vector machines svm and here's the example and i'm going to use a scalar okay so this scalar basically uh you can uh, well, uh briefly you know explain this program it load the uh, the sample svm data format okay and then this sample data file in S in div svm format load into the system it becomes a uh, labeled point uh, data okay data set and then you do some uh, random step for the 60 40 ratio for the um, training and test okay then you got a training data set and the test data set okay and then the next is is simply the bigger model you got a vm with hgd that train you know to train the model and after you train the model uh you can do the prediction here is the prediction okay and then uh, after the prediction, you get some performance metrics like RC, AUC, 
and, and, and all those kind of things okay so and the program is not very long you know probably you know oh, tens of lines only so we can just simply you know copy the whole thing okay copy the whole thing uh, all the way to Oh, uh, where the last one is saved and the little model. I don't want to save the model, so I just give that part. So I copy to here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this into a notepad. Okay. So I start a notepad so I can accumulate my code. Okay. So here's my code. I can pass it over. Okay. And then I'm going to save it to uh, my uh, Spark directory. Oh, uh, this, uh, this is Spark. Okay. And then uh, to somewhere, or uh, let me just you know uh, put into uh, my folder then under Spark, and then there I put it under the Humble Four. Okay. And then uh, yeah, because this is one of the uh, the yeah, the homework assignments I gave to my students in the machine learning class. So I'm gonna call it at homework four. Just scale. Okay. Save it. Okay, and then uh, well, obviously there's some uh, path issue, and I'm gonna solve that later. Uh, but uh, we can take a look at this. Okay. Uh, here. The data file sample that lib SVM is sitting somewhere. Uh, let me burn, uh, put in a comment window. Okay. Uh, my comment window cannot be moved. Hold on, let me move it over here. Okay, so this is the comment window. Okay. So if you go to uh, uh, Spark, okay, Spark, uh, not uh, data. So you can see ML lib, okay. And then after that, you can assemble lib SVM data is here, okay. So it's here. So you can take a look at what what it looks like, okay. You can uh, say assemble uh, lib SVM. Uh, okay. I want to take. So it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's actually uh, some uh, support matrix for me. Okay, and the first one is the label, and followed by 128. You know, the element 128 with the value 51, element 129 with the value 159, and stuff like that. Okay, so that's the uh, div SVM for me, and the files here. So. Uh, but remember this path, okay, this path is under Spark Data ML lib, okay. But now our program, we save it to somewhere under uh, then and then uh, uh, homework for, okay, we save it to here. So our data is here. Uh, uh, homework for the scalar is here, okay. Uh, our program is here, okay. So, um, so uh, we we will need to change the relative path, you know, to two labels up. If you are going to run Spark Share here, okay. So two labels up, and then go to the data, and then you will see the uh, the program will be able to find it. So let's go back to uh, the program we have here. So let me just maximize it. Okay. Uh, I need to, we don't need to maximize because it's. Uh, let me see. Okay, let's just keep it this way. Okay, so here, oh, uh, we gonna uh, well, it start with with well, we can start and find the C Spark data, so that will make sure, oh, uh, nothing will go wrong. Okay, C Spark. Okay, then data. Okay, so the program, uh, not the program, the uh, yeah, the program should be able to load the, the data file in it. So save it. And now we go back to the command command line console command line prompt. Okay, so it's type Spark shell. Uh, 
Okay. So the first thing um, <clears throat> we need to do, okay, is to get the symbol to work on your computer. Okay, that's the very first step because uh, if you cannot get a symbol to work, then you need to try to fix it, you know, to get it work before you can do anything for it. Uh, because you don't know whether it's a system problem or your programming problem or something else. Okay, so let's you know, try to get it work. Okay, once you get into the system, okay, so I got a Spark and then now I'm running on the, uh, my Dan Humble 4 directory. Okay, so I can load load the the file which is w4 scala okay so if I load it and you will run okay so keep an eye on the error messages okay okay no error messages perfect okay so you can see that uh you can scroll back okay just a little bit to see uh what's going on okay from the beginning Oh no, that's the way before. So we start from uh, right here. Uh, wait, pull up a little bit back. Okay, right here. Okay. So, <clears throat> so here I I load. Uh, you load the humble for the scale up program. Okay. So it loading, and it import bunch of libraries. Okay. And then uh, it try to uh the RDD okay and then partition the data okay and after after RDD got built okay you it actually random split uh, the data okay and then set a number of iterations uh, to 100 uh, for the <coughs> stochastic uh, gradient descent uh, to, to work okay and then um, it created a model. That's the model, okay. And by passing the the uh, uh, the intercept, well, this is SVM intercept, and number of features, uh, six ninety two number of features and number of classes, two classes, and threshold is zero, okay. So 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 you know two. If it's positive, then it class a positive class. If it's negative, it's negative class. Then uh okay, then basically it try to uh, uh build a model, okay. Then then after it done that, uh we actually uh run the evaluation on the test assemble. Then it give the, uh, it give the uh the, the AU ROC. Okay. It's a value. Okay. Uh, it's one point zero, and then the AOC <coughs> is one point zero. So basically, it's hundred percent correct to classify um this thing. So we can also say the data set is linear, separable. Okay. But one thing though, uh, I I don't actually need to split okay the data because I want to test uh, if the two data set, not two data set, <laughs> two classes in the data set is linearly separable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, disable the split. Okay, so I don't need a split. Okay, so here I here I got a data right here right here I got data right here. Okay. I load data, then I randomly split, so I don't need a split. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is uh, I just you know mark it out, come in it out, not mark it out, come in it out, or mark it out, whatever. So another training, uh, well, training I'm going to be the data because I don't, I don't need to split the data set into a training data set and test data set because uh, I just want to see if the two classes in the data set are linearly separable. Okay, so again this one is data, okay, as well. So both the training and test will be the exact same data, okay. And then the rest I'm going to keep it, okay, the rest I'm going to keep it as it is, okay. 
so that uh, we again we can get a uh, uh, area and the ROC okay to, to get printed down and then we'll see okay uh, so let's save it uh, save it okay and run it again <clears throat> so now I actually get the uh, all the data you know for the training okay training means that the SVN is built upon all the data okay and then uh, in the test I actually just use the training data for the test and again I will see the AOC is 1.0 perfect so that means you know this data set is linear and separable okay at this point you know, I don't do in the kernel or whatever okay so we get this done get it to work and then we we'll move back to the next so next that we're gonna load the, the iris data set so I have the iris data set uh, already uh, downloaded from the internet uh, let me uh, bring it up let me take a look at it okay so okay uh, Okay, so here's the Irish data set. Okay. Oh, actually, hold on. I think uh, uh, this is not the one I'm going to use. So let's go to the one I'm going to actually load into the system. Okay, hold on one second. Let me. Okay. So I have. Uh, Okay, this is the one I'm going to actually use. Okay, so this is in the CSV format. Okay. Uh, so it got the four features. Okay, one, two, three, four. There's some a bunch of some. Uh, some feature names in the, the simple names and the sample width and then the petal length petal width and the species okay so the the fifth column is the labels we're going to have okay and then the first the three or four columns are features so you actually have four dimensional features and one label and the label is labeled with some strings like uh, uh, setosa okay and setosa and you can see that you know for the for each class it has a fifty records. Set outside fifty records. Which color here you have from fifty one to uh, one hundred, okay. And one oh one. Uh, then uh Virginica, okay, Virginica that's another one to raise. So basically you have three uh three classes of data, okay. And this is the data we're gonna load. This is Iris that's C S V, okay. And if you want to look at the, uh, there, there's a, you can also download the iris dot names. Okay, it's a, it's a description about the data set. Okay, so you can you just go down that you have class three classes. You know, Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica three. You know, and then it has some some statistics. Okay, and then it's just for your information. You don't you don't you don't need any order about this. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> so the our next step is we're gonna load the CSV data into uh, Spark and to work on it. Okay. So let's go to our program. Our program is right here. Okay. So now uh, <clears throat> we're gonna load the data into it. Okay. <clears throat> so. So here, instead of load this, I'm going to load uh, uh, data, iris data, in a CSV format. OK. But uh, <clears throat> before I put the code here, you know, I want to do some tests before I can uh, 
put it there, you know, to save some time, uh, to some test, okay. So I go to uh, the command line window under the sparse shell, okay. So <clears throat> I first, you know, I do some, just some, uh, some test to load, oh, hold on one second. Uh, to load the CSV file into the system. Okay, so I can say value D, uh, DF. It's a SC data text file, and then uh, the file name is iris dot CSV. Okay, <coughs> so. They said load it because it only 150 records. It just loaded it. Okay, so take a look at what it looked like. So this is the first line. Okay, uh, we just we just seen it. It's the heading. Okay, if you type collect. Okay, so you see a bunch of lines. Okay, it's a <coughs> it's a array of strings. Okay, basically when you load it in, and the first first heading you know, contain the column headings. Actually, we don't need that. Okay, so we can just filter that out. Okay, the best way to filter the heading out, but we don't need that. Okay, is you loaded it. Okay, and then you put a, <coughs> a filter. Okay, so the filter will filter out something you don't like. So within the filter is something, um, some put inspiration. Okay, if it's true, then, uh it will be filtered out. So here, we don't want the, <coughs> uh, we don't want uh, the line, if you look at the line, the first line contain length, at the E-N-G-T-H, and the rest of, you know, do not contain length. So you, you want to uh, check if anything, if, if, if any strings, any lines that contains uh, length, then you're gonna filter it out, okay? Uh, so that uh, you want to negate this one, so that uh, negate it. So if, if not containing dense, you keep it, okay? If not containing, if contain dense, you filter it out. So this will actually filter out of heading, okay? So after that, you can see the first. So now the first thing got filtered out, okay? So, okay, so <clears throat> once we got that, uh, we want to we want to parse uh, each line, okay, in the data set, and then convert that into uh, data points, okay. Uh, if you run the program again, okay, you run the program again. Oh, hold on, let me see, I, I may have, uh, Yeah, if you run the program again, okay, then the data is the <coughs> data type that can be used for the SVM SGD. Okay, so if you run the program again, <coughs> okay, and you type data. Okay, so this data is after we load the, the sample. And it, it say uh, it's RDD, okay, and RDD of what? Of this uh, regression uh, labeled point. So that's the data type of each record in RDD, okay. So basically, you know, what are we trying to do here is we need to load the iris data, and for each record, okay, each record, each line, we want to convert it to label the point okay if you can do that then then that data set can be feed into uh, the SVN uh, spark SVN directly okay so that that's that's the goal so convert each line in the uh, iris data set into label the point okay so <clears throat> the best way to do that okay is to uh, write a function like you know to parse the the string the array of strings basically okay so 
let's load the program. Uh, not load the uh, yeah, load the CSV. I will CSV again. Okay, so we have actually I still have it here. Yeah, I have here. I loaded it. Oh, uh, df dot uh, first. Okay, it's df not fd. Okay, so here <coughs> I have a string. Okay, so I want. I, oh, let me take a piece of it. Okay, so let me. Uh, <coughs> Let me, uh, because this is a string, df that for is a string. So I want to write a function that, that take a string argument, okay, and then return a labeled point, okay. So, <clears throat> so here is the same, but uh, uh, let me just define a function, okay. To test it down, so once it's working, then I'm gonna add it into the uh, our HW4 that scalar program. So I define a parse. Okay. So this parse is simply saying that uh, I want to take a, a line of string. Okay. Uh, as an argument, and it's gonna return. Okay. Uh, label the data point. Okay. So, <clears throat> so this line, okay, now I got a line here, right? So I so first thing, you know, break the line into pieces. Okay, so I say, wow, SS. Okay, you go to line that spree. And spree, because the command separate, so it's simply that put a comma, to spree by commands, okay. Then, uh, <clears throat> then uh, I just simply doing this, okay. And this is what happened. Okay, so the parse simply take a string argument and then split it down. Okay, so I hit enter. Now, if I say parse, okay, uh, df that first, okay, uh, <coughs> it should return something, right? So, but it's it doesn't show here. So let's say print uh, df. Uh, that uh, first got a typo. It's empty. Hmm. Okay. Okay. It's empty. So. Something is wrong. Okay, let me see. Uh, let me just do df that first. Okay, uh, that split. Uh, if I do this, it, it works. Okay, uh, but if I put into the function parse, it actually. It does not split. So something is wrong. Let me see. Let me define it again. Okay. And then uh, bow ss uh, equal uh, line dot split. Okay. So now I to ss here. So let it uh, return. Okay. Okay, now it's written a real string. Okay, good. So if I pass, then uh, say df that first. Okay, so you should return an array, array of strings. Okay. So array of strings. Uh, so what's next is because it is a label. Okay. So we need to. Um, um, convert this label. Into a double, either zero or one. Okay, depends on the label. And the rest of this, five dot one. Okay, this all converted to a double. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm gonna use a technique uh, to, well, 
to convert the set the string set you know we can use uh, uh, switch okay so a switch uh, you can you can look at the look at my slice uh, for the switch So on the switch, 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 okay. Switch, switch, and scale, okay. So, So here, here's some of the slides I have. Okay, so switch. Okay, so this is a switch structure. So uh, it's a, the syntax is a val. I want to assign the value, result. Okay, based on whether I match the case one, case two, uh, one. If I is one, then the result you get one, and so forth. Okay, and the last one is it's otherwise. Okay. So this is a, a switch structure. We're gonna use this switch structure. So test it out first. Okay. So uh, so I, I first you know do some tests on the switch structure. Okay. So I want to say I want the label. Okay. So label assign the value. Okay. Based on uh, based on uh, the the variable. So the variable is saying the if it's a uh, setosa, okay, based on this. So let's say uh based on if this is set tosa, okay. So this guy uh if it that match, okay, match uh say the first case is uh, I want to match uh let's say setosa. Uh, let's let me choose something else. Match uh, then, okay, for example, just do some test. And then if it's match that, I put 0, 0.0, okay. If it match like Setosa, Setosa, it's TOSA, then uh, I give uh, value uh, 1.0, okay. And then uh, else, something else, we should underscore. Uh, Genesis uh, argument to reprint otherwise. So 2.0. Okay, this is for test. Okay. So the label is assigned to the value. So now we can run this. So label now has 1.0. Label 1.0 because it matches this one. Okay. So perfect. So we can add this uh, into our program. So our program is right somewhere right here. <clears throat> so now we uh, we first load the iris. Okay, so we say uh, val df. Okay, um, equal to uh, sc the text file. Okay, so we load the uh, iris csv. Okay, and then don't forget we need to filter out the heading. Filter out the heading is we just test the indication underscore contents and yeah if a line contain length the only line the only line contains length is the first heading the first line okay so if that's the case I filter it out now the SDF should just contain the data with the array of strings okay. Now, um, <clears throat> then after that, I need to, uh, well, let me see here. I need to uh, uh, define a pass function that returns data point, okay? Because I'm gonna use map on the DF, 
later on. So I might define a function to deal with each line. So each line will convert it to a label the point data structure. Okay. So a div uh, pass. And then uh, the pass again, I will receive one uh, argument. And then you cannot return uh, a data point. Okay, so here I'm not I'm haven't done it, but so far I have uh, I have something working that val ss. Okay, it's line dot split based on the common separated uh, list. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now uh, that's. That's what we have so far, and we also have labeled. So, label. Okay. So here, after I split uh, SS, if I split the line into SS, okay. Let's see what SS is. So let's go back here. Oh, uh, SS. Oh no, I don't have SS. So, let's SS equal to uh, <clears throat> well, SS equal to equal to uh, the first line, df the first, okay, that's split. Okay, so ss is an array, okay, of strings. And then this guy, the set, setosa is the last one, so it's ss that last. So ss that last will refer to, will refer to the, the setosa, the last one, okay. So I can use that in the uh, switch structure here, right here. Okay. So I'm gonna assign that based on the SS that last okay after I split it. So here after I split it right so I can I have another called label. It's equal to uh, SS that last okay SS that last then uh, <coughs> uh that will match okay uh the following okay so this is the structure okay so the first one the first one is the uh uh the the stosa okay let's say uh, this is stosa okay so i Map is to a 0, 0.0. Okay. Okay. And then uh, I map the uh, the rest. Okay. To uh, 1.0. Okay. So here I only assume Citosa is the class zero, and the rest is class one. Okay. So, but then uh, I also need to do one more thing because we have three classes. Okay. So we want to you know pick up two classes at a time. Okay. So in order to do that, uh, I need to do one more thing. Okay. Before I actually get into the uh the parsing so when we get to the parsing i want to make sure i have only two classes of data okay so here you have df df is original one the df that it contains uh, all three types of the data okay so i want to filter it out and i call it the uh, row data so i filter it out say uh, row data so there is that equal to a, a df that filter. So I, I filter now. Uh, there are three classes, you know. I want to I want to pick up two out of three classes. So I if I can filter one out, then that's only two classes there. Okay. So this filter, the first one, I'm gonna filter the third classes. Okay. So the third classes. So again. If not contain, not contains the the third one, the third one. Okay, so the third one, which uh, let me let me 
take a look at the okay the server is like a virginica so if you feel the virginica then I only got this citosa and the vers versicolor okay so virginica so I filter virginica okay so I filter it down and I hit the raw data okay so that should be on the uh, two, two classes uh, wait how come I still have virginica Did I filter out Virginica? V I R G I N I C A. V I R G I N I V. Oh, V I R not V E R. Sorry. So V I R. V I R. G I N I C A Virginica. Okay. So let's do it again. So I should now have only two classes. Okay, let me uh, scroll up a little bit. So I have the vesicular. Okay, and there are several ways to do that. Okay, this is my way of doing that. Oh, so you got a citosa vesicular. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you only got two, two, two type, two classes there. Okay. Okay. So good. So after that, then. Um, in the parts, I only have the two classes only. Okay, so I go back to uh, my uh, program right here. Okay, so so here we assume okay only uh, two classes of in the data set, which is also requirement for the S, S, uh, Spark SVM in uh, the data set uh, in the raw data in the, uh, in the data okay okay so after that then I should be very close to you know, good so here I I load it in okay then I fill it out good so filter filter out one class of data so I can file a uh, row data. Okay, so is equal to df that filter. Okay, now again, we do the same trick. If it contains uh, one type, and then we just put the, the three types here. Okay, three types here. Let's say uh, the first one is a uh, citosa. Okay. The second one is a uh, versicola, and the third one is a uh, virginica. Okay, so let's just give it a number. This is the first one. This is the, the a second one. A third one. Okay. So if so the first one, you know, I'm I'm gonna filter out Virginica. So that give us only uh Citosa and Vesicular. Okay. So I fill it out, okay. So after I filter it out, I should now go here, okay. Uh then okay. Then I need to assign the label to O. Oh, by the way. Uh the parts only get two out of three classes, which are the Citosa, Vesicular, and Virginica. But I don't know which one. Okay, to be labeled as zero. And the, so I need to uh, do something. Okay, so I need to you know, pass, well, pass, not, not praise. Okay, so I need to give another argument. Okay. So that will tell uh, which class I want to be labeled as zero. So I say uh, class zero, zero. Okay, this one of type of string as well. I'm gonna pass to it. Okay. So if I pass the class to it, okay, then I then should make here a class 
zero. Okay. If it is class zero, it's zero. Otherwise, it's. But I need to do some experiment before I can run it easier. Okay. So that uh, let me let me try to define the function uh, that pass to. Okay. So let me just copy the whole thing. Okay. Copy the whole thing, and then I can run here, pass it here. And then I got some uh, some warning. Okay. Uh, actually, it's, it give it give us something. Okay. After a variable pattern cannot match. So patterns after a variable pattern. So here, if you intended to match against a parameter class zero of method parse, you must back ticks. Okay. So I need to back ticks uh, the class zero so that it will map the content there. Okay. I can actually you know class uh, class zero. So let me fix this. So I go back here. Okay, I go here. I need to uh, back tick. Okay, back tick right here. Back tick, and then back tick here. Okay, so that will map uh, and save it. That will map uh, uh, the content of the variable I pass over it. So again, I copy it again, and I put it here. Pass it. So now it's okay. Uh, the return is not labeled uh, point yet, uh, but it is now we convert. Uh, the label into a double, okay. By passing this, uh, okay. So we are getting closer. But now I also need to uh, convert the rest. Uh, four features, right? Four features are or the SS. Okay, so SS uh, zero one two three, zero one two three, five point one, three point five, one point four, Two, so I need to convert this into um, vectors, uh, based on the uh, label the point uh, uh, data structure. So the fourth one is a double, so label point is the fourth one is a double, and the rest is a vector. Vector is a feature vector basically. Okay, so that I need the uh, feature vector. I need to import the import this guy the label point. So I say import. Uh, Org the Apache, the Spark, the ML dip, the regression, that label the point. Okay. Label point. Okay. So I import this guy. So I can use the label point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, create a, some uh, dense vector. Uh, so I ne I also need a uh, dense vector uh, library. So I import uh, org okay the Apache the Spark the the ML lib the uh, 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 vectors okay vectors. So import this guy. Uh, there's another vector, but that vector is immutable. Vectors is immutable, so we need the vectors. Okay. So after I got the vectors, then I can test it out. If I can create um, uh, the dense vector, okay, and from the array of string of numbers. Okay. So here I can I can do some trick. Okay. Since SS SS right SS is the array of strings. So if I take uh, the first four okay which is uh, the size minus one okay so if I take SS the length Minus one, okay. So it should give me the first four, okay. So five point one, three point one. But these are all strings, okay. So after that, I need to map uh, uh, each, you know, and convert each to uh, double, okay. So let's say uh, to double, 
Okay, so that D will convert each of string into double. So now I got an array of doubles. Okay. So then if I convert this array of double, you know, to the dense vectors, and I'm done. So I can simply call vectors. Okay. Dot dense. Okay. And then uh, the the stuff I have ss dot tag okay ss dot length minus one the map okay then convert that to double okay and that should do the I need one more parenthesis so I should get the uh, dense vectors uh okay something wrong. Wait, hold on. Do I get one more? Yeah, I get one more. Okay, so I should just get get rid of one. Okay. Okay, now I got I got a uh, Spark MLD okay, vector 5.1, 3.5, 1.4, 0 0.2. Perfect. So this will be same as DF uh not DF data. Okay, so let's back ML lib regression table point. Oh no, this is table point, but this is a vector. Okay, so I still one more one more step. So I need to uh, combine the label and this together to form a a label point. Okay, so I can simply say that I want to new and label point okay label point then I have label let me put label 0, 0.0 for the time being and then the vector I have is like uh, oh wait uh, do I have a label yes I do have label okay and then do I have uh, oh, I don't have the vector dense vector so I put this dense vector into a uh, DV Now I got the label and the DV. I want to combine them together into a label point uh, constructor. So new or label. Okay. And then the first one label. Okay, so test it out. The second one DV. Or label the point. Okay. A B L E D label point. Okay, now I get this label 1.0 and the vector vector okay and then it give me the label point okay and is that the same as this regression label point okay so we test it out and it's, it works so we just pack everything together into our program here okay so here I have the label already right so now I'm going to uh, so here I'm going to uh, convert uh, convert um, uh, features to uh, vectors. Okay, dense vectors. So here uh, I am simply just saying that uh, I can I new a lab label point. Okay. Label the point, okay. And the first thing is label, okay. I already get it. And second one is a uh, dense vector, vector dot dense, okay. And inside it's uh, just ss dot tag, uh, tag the the size minus one elements, okay. Ss dot length minus one, okay. And then uh, convert each. Convert each into a double. Okay. So after that, uh, I so this is dense vector, and then this is for the label point. Okay. So that should do the trick for the parse. Okay. So I can save it. Okay. Then test it out. Okay. Test it out. And then. 
uh, it it works very good. Okay, so that uh, it give me the level point. Okay, and convert it. Okay, after that, then let me go back here. So now my parse is working. Okay, so after I filter it out, I filter out, I filter out the Virginica. Okay, then I can load the training data set. Okay, now I don't need to load the data set. Okay, and just commit it out. Uh, instead of load, I'm just on to convert it into the data point. Okay, so just punish here, commit out, and then uh, uh, just say convert uh, data set to uh, labeled uh, point. Okay, so which is uh, I say about well, data. Okay, is equal to row data. Row data is after filter out the Virginica. So I'm going to map here. So I map to the parse function, and each each function, uh, each line will be parsed and then generate uh, the data points. So the first one is the string pass over it the line and then the second one I want to give uh, uh, which you know class of data will be labeled uh, zero so in this is in this because I feel the Virginica the third one right Virginica got fit out so I want to set the setosa to be class zero so setosa setosa to the first okay so and that should be that should be it. So the data now should contain the two classes of data, the setosa and the vesicular. Okay, and the rest will be the same. The rest will just whatever it is. Okay, the rest. Uh, wait. Training data, data. Okay, so that is save it, and then now we can load the data. Not not load it, load program. Okay. And watch the error message. Hey, no error message. Oh, good. So now I get one. If I get one, means you know, oh, it's a perfect, separable. Okay. So. Yeah, it don't. You don't. Uh, this is a warning. You cannot get plus, but that's not a big deal. It still run. Okay. So so what's okay? Number of features is four. Number of class. Okay, good. So that ensures that the uh, the two, okay, are separable. The class zero and class one are separable, which means uh, setosa and the vesicular are linearly separable. Okay. So you can use this. You know, you can do the rest. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to to show you some of the the kernel mapping. Okay. So that, that if you look at the let me see the slides I have for the homework. Go for now one second. Homework four. Okay. So here's the homework four you have. Uh, okay, right here. Okay. Okay, so now we are somewhere here. Okay, somewhere here. Okay, now the the tricky part is I want to uh, convert uh, each data point uh, into this polynomial function mapping. Okay, so and notice that the x is a vector. So the first one is a scalar. Okay, the one over square root of three. X okay, so it's a scalar multiplication to a vector okay, and the second one the dot product okay, and the third one is the uh, the dot product times a uh, vector okay, and the last one is a constant so we ignore the constant okay, so basically the four dimensional data point you're gonna convert it to after this kernel function mapping, uh, you're gonna have this four dimension right here right. 
and this is one dimension because that that product is squared. Okay, and then uh, there's another four dimension, so altogether nine dimension. Okay, so basically you want to map each four dimension data point into nine dimension using this computation. It's not very difficult. Uh, so let's work on the scalar multiplication, scalar times a vector. Okay. So let's again go here. Okay. So if I have a let's say let's let's play play around with uh, vectors. Okay, vectors. Let's say I have a uh, vector, say a uh, vector. Uh, and then one, two, three, four, for example. Okay. So this vector is wait. It is immutable vectors. Immutable. Okay. So um. And it's a final collection, immutable vector. Okay. So let me see if I can. If I say v zero, okay, it's one. So v zero uh, plus one is two. But uh, if I say v zero is behind the v zero uh, plus one, uh, update it's, it cannot be updated. Okay. So because it's immutable. Okay. So <clears throat> since it's immutable. We need something that is uh, mutable, okay. So it's easier to to work with, okay. So uh, if you search around, okay. If you search around, um. You should be able to find some, well. Uh, but anyway, uh, we can create another vector. Okay, it's fine. So we can create a vector. Let's say um, uh, v one. Okay, v one is a uh, v. Uh, what we have? So v has a bunch of stuff. Okay. Do I have a map? Yeah, I do have a map. Okay. So if I have a map, then that would be really cool. So if I have a map, then I say map. Okay. Uh, then uh, in, inside map, I am just want to uh, times 2. So V1, we want to get 2 for first. Oh, by the way, I want the double. I think it's better. I don't want the integer. So let me change it. Change it to a double. So v1, uh, v is equal to uh, vector. Okay. Uh, so it's 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. Okay. So it's a double. Okay, good. And then uh, now the the scalar multiplication. Okay, I want to generate another vector that is uh, one. One divided by square root three times the vector x. Okay, so I got a vector x, and let's just call vector x. Okay, so let's say vector x is equal to v. So now I have x. Okay, so x now is one, two, three, four. Okay, I, and I want to times each element in the vector. One over square root three. Okay, so I can. Um, Create a vector one. V one okay equal to x. X is the vector I want to do. And I map each element okay to divide by uh square root three. Okay. Square root three in uh scale I can use math that square root right S Q R T uh three. So that it will give you v1 that is uh, 
1 divided by square root of 3 for each element okay so this is easy easy achieved okay easy achieved now the second one you need to work on is s squared so s squared is actually quite straightforward okay you can create the again create the v2 squared so it's x squared uh, x squared is x the product x okay so as that product is x so here you can uh, <coughs> you can try uh, well is a that product so we squared it and then we need something together right so this is something called um, reduce over fold something so if you go to let me let me pull out uh, some slides about the fold left okay um, okay here's some of slides uh, say uh, fold yeah you got a fold left okay so this is slides I have you know about the scalar programming introduction to the scalar in spark so here I have nums nums is a is a list or something so you can fold left zero so that will add all the numbers together okay and then you can uh, you don't want to time them together you just sum them together with some operation so the fold left zero with addition it should be something we are going to use okay so if we go back here so here we want to do uh, x squared okay so we we call fold left okay so fold left then uh, initial value because accumulated right so accumulate so if one two three four you want to what you want to do is you want to square each element and sum them together okay so to square them it to square them together uh you 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 probably cannot you cannot do do this number times this number you you you, you cannot do this because i think i mentioned this before you cannot do it because you can only use the underscore once okay yeah it cannot work so to do that you know the best is you can uh run the uh math that pow uh, you can do uh this one uh whatever okay uh plus math that power okay and then uh this one two okay so this one will accumulate uh, the square of each element together so let's see uh, it give me some errors okay so I can so properly I don't properly I don't need it because I can probably probably doing this okay uh, oh no it's error it's actually this one mismatch so we probably need to keep the initial value to 0, 0.0 okay now it's got a type of mismatch so I probably need to do uh, this one plus this one okay okay so it is 30 1 square plus 2 square 4 5 plus 3 square 9 14 plus uh, 16 yeah it is 30 so that uh, this is uh, the the dot product of itself of the vector itself okay so that's the second one so once we got a second one the third one is easier so this is the product and then uh, this is the s cube f cube is x dot times x okay so now we can well v2 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 is the dot product right so so uh, the last one v3 v3 is actually v2 
not v2 uh, x that map okay uh, each each of the each of the element just times uh, v2 okay and that should do the trick so v3 is actually just this okay that's v3 so now you got a uh, x the original one and v1 is the square root which is the not square root sorry uh, it's the uh, v times uh, 1 over square root 3 okay and the v2 is a uh, uh, that product and then v3 is the uh, x cube so it's just like ln together okay so to ln together you can simply say that uh, kv kernel vector is equal to uh, v1 okay plus v2 i think we need to okay let me, let me just do some test okay if v1 plus v oh man v is not the uh, vector just to, oh no v v2 uh, v2 okay so we for the vector we Ln together, we probably need to use plus plus double. But if I add v3, okay, I can add v3, but v2, v2, uh, no, is it v3 is it's a, a vector or double. v2, v2 is just a double, not a vector. So I need to make that a vector as well. So we can say v v2 is assigned a uh, vector v2 uh, v2 v okay okay now I got a vector so, so now I can sum v1 plus v v2 v v3 okay and just want to separate it uh, so that so this is the vector concatenation so now i got the first one four dimensions one two three four and then this one's three this one five the 30 30 is the the, the top product and then the 30 is 90 12 is the uh, x cube so altogether nine dimensions okay so that this one would then uh, do the trick you know to convert the uh, each sample point in from the four dimension to nine dimension okay so if you just add it together into the the homework uh, program right here so the best place to do that obviously the parts right because parts have the have the parts okay uh, you can quite create another parts like a parts or kernel parts or whatever you want to call it just whatever kernel so that will that will you know take I can do it here you know say uh, pass okay with a kernel polynomial kernel transformation okay so that will actually uh, convert each data point from four dimension to nine dimension okay so once you got a data set the rest will just do the same thing you know you can just use, use the rest of code and that should do the trick all right so that's the video and Hope you enjoy and learn something. Uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.